Hello again, welcome into Crew Call, taking you into the garage area and talking to the folks that make the race cars go around the racetrack. I'm Steve Post, pit road reporter for Motor Racing Network, joined by 25-time and championship winning crew chief Todd Gordon. Hello, Todd, how are you? I'm great. We are getting down there, aren't we? Three to go. Three to go. And uh, what you have described consistently as the second most important race of the year goes to Cliff Daniels, Hendrick Motorsports, Kyle Larson. Um, just your take on what they did, what they accomplished, and what you saw from Las Vegas. The last two champions won this race. Right. Including them. Yes. Two years ago. Yes. It, it just, it puts you in a great position. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a great battle between Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson. Uh, yeah. a, a great drive by Christopher Bell to come up just a little bit short. But, uh, you know, those two were, those two were phenomenal. And, yeah. and that's, this is where you have to, you have to yeah. step up. You've got to go to that another, next level. and. And figure out how to be a how to be a victory and and yeah. get yourself there. Cliff Daniels and, and and Kyle did a great job of it. I think they're in a great position. But the question mark becomes how much of a distraction is the rest of the program? Because you still have a teammate trying to get in. Right. You still have another teammate trying to get on the owner side. Owner side. So it's uh we'll we'll see where it all goes, but they're they're sitting in high cotton yeah they really are speaking of that owner side alan gustafson our guests we'll talk to alan here a little bit about what it's like to race for the owner's championship and and how that dynamic works because it is fascinating that's for sure um the big news out of it from from end of the race into monday to monday night was Ryan Blaney. Of course, Jonathan Hassel, we had him on last week. Mm -hmm. DQ'd, then not DQ'd. What have you learned about that scenario and situation, Todd? Yeah, interesting. And, and I, I guess I'll go through the whole piece is that pre-race, when you go through inspection before we go out to practice and qualify, um, part of the inspection process, you need to take all four of your shocks to NASCAR to have them check the, uh, the overall, the minimum, uh, to make sure that they're above the minimum extended length for all four shocks. Right. And then NASCAR will seal those and they'll carry them out to your, you'll come with you out to your car to, to install them. So they passed that, they sealed, they ran the race, they came back afterwards, seals are still intact, safety wire is still on them, and one doesn't pass. Yeah. It really kind of, um, kind of, you know, confusing and you wouldn't expect it. I think NASCAR tech, like over 40 shocks yeah. and there was one that failed. So. They got to the end of it, and from what I listened to from uh, Elton Sawyer uh, right. on, on TMD on right. Tuesday, uh, from um, Brad Moran, who came on Dave Moody's show on Monday night, uh, they found some inconsistencies in how the boards were set up, and maybe reset between the two. There was okay. something, and maybe a set screw got loose, or something got loose, and they reset them. But as they, they kept the shocks, they brought those back to the R&D Center with them. So, so Penske didn't get those back. And they got all the parts. And, and, and from what I understand, they looked at their processes. They found some errors in the way that they set the boards up. And it wasn't, yes, only one shock failed. But the, the puzzling part of this whole piece is that if I were thinking, if you said left rear, right rear, I'd be all over it because there's an advantage to getting the car lower. Right. A left front, I just didn't see where you'd be that, where you'd try to, to, to play in that area. And I think NASCAR saw it as well as like, why did we fail this one? And, um, what what they came up with is that nobody was close to this minimum extended length. The 12 car was the closest, and that's what put them over when they got their gauges off. Right. So everything's right in the world now. Yeah. Rescinding the penalty is a correct call. They took the shock apart. All the parts were right. They, they, yeah. That shock got a thorough investigation. Oh, I'm sure it did. Uh, yeah. On Monday, and, and, and NASCAR, in, in retrospect, came back and said, you know what, that, our penalty call was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, I kudos to, to the sanctioning body for correcting what was wrong. Yeah, I because I understand the pre-race shock process. Yes, with sealing the shocks, and when I, I'm like, how? Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't understand enough to know. You know, front. I, I mean, I understand the basic premise of rear shocks, front shocks, that sort of thing. But I'm just like, how in the world did this get through the pre-race, right. and not get through post-race? Right, and and if you were going to play a game or play games on anything, you play on the rears because rear, getting yeah. the diffuser close to the racetrack makes a lot more downforce. So yeah. that's the the overall the reason this rule was put into the next gen rule book was about controlling how far you could travel the cars down, right? Because they needed something to stop before we just drug the bottoms off on the right. racetrack. Exactly. So that's what they're there for. But the front is not you. The front's not down. The front's up. Yeah. So it was a little confusing as to why they were... A lot of questions that 
probably raised more questions. Yes. Uh, I mean, answers. I had in, I had people within the industry texting me saying, why would somebody do that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I got no idea. I no idea what but, Hassler's um, got going on over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I went back and I went back and looked at pictures. I'm like, now the front end's way up in the air. So I, I eh, Yeah. There's just get a it. lot of murkiness to you it. You go to Daytona, you might be close to that stop. Right. Because getting that low takes drag out. Right. But it doesn't make downforce that way. So I, it didn't make sense. Right. And, and ultimately, there was NASCAR's updated their procedures and how they handle that. Right. And they won't make that same mistake. Right. Absolutely. Before we get to Alan, three teams in the top five that are not playoff drivers. Yeah. So we, and we've talked about, you know, Kyle Bush, Randall Burnett, they've been a little all over the map. Brad Kozlowski, Matt McCall, been so good. Um, and then Ross Chastain and Phil Surgeon, yep. they seem like. I understand it's too much, too little, too late, but you've got to feel pretty good if you're those three teams that come out of there with top five finishes. Yeah, and all three that I could say could be in the round of eight. I mean, could all, be in all, the three, round of eight. all exactly. three could have been round of eight drivers. Uh, it, it, interesting to see how this goes. Uh, you know, they're they're elite level teams. I, I think in all cases, Brad's still trying to build the the, the RFK brand, yeah. uh, and he still hasn't gotten a, a victory. And and he's he's driven <laughs> yeah. to to get there. I think I think that makes sense in that respect. Uh, Kyle Busch is Kyle Busch. Yeah. He and Randall are still trying to get themselves where where they're, they've got consistency built into 24. Bill Surge and Ross Chastain, they've had a little bit of a lull. They're, they're, they're working their way back. The, the piece outside of that, though, all of our eight playoff teams finished in the top 11. There you go. Then it was all, then it was all playoff guys. Yeah. I mean, you, you had a great day and you didn't make any points on anybody because they all had days right yeah. there with you. We're going to talk about points later on because this thing is a scrum. I mean, mm -hmm. this thing is, this thing is, you sneeze at Homestead, you could be out. Yeah. I yeah. mean, this is how tight it is. We'll talk about that when we get to the final segment of the show, but let's step away right now. When we come back, Alan Gustafson from Hendrick Motorsports, he joins us. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Todd Gordon, Steve Post. Let's go over to Hendrick Motorsports. Joining us, Crew Chief on that number nine Chevy, Chase Elliott. Alan Gustafson joins us. Hello, Alan. How are you? Good morning, fellas. How are y'all? We are fantastic. We are fantastic. Rolling along, you're in your own playoff battle as far as the owner's points go. And uh, up until Vegas, you had things rolling along well, kind of stubbed your toe there a little bit. But but big picture, how are things going with the nine team and where are you guys at with that? Yeah, I mean, certainly our performance has been better. Look at our wounds from Vegas. That was, uh, you know, a disappointing performance at, at, at best. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll focus forward and, and try to learn from what went on at Vegas and, and improve for Homestead. I uh, certainly love racing at Homestead and going to South Florida is always fun. So, yeah, looking forward to that. So you're in the owner's championship, and I want to make a point on this, but I think up till Vegas, top 10 finishes every playoff race. Uh, the round of 12, you were the second highest uh, points uh, gatherer behind your teammate who finished first, second, second. But uh, um, it's been impressive, the run you've been on. For for the fans, they really don't, I don't think they grasp the owner's championship piece and, and how important it is. Everybody gets the driver's championship, but from the team side, it's a huge piece, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just an odd thing. I mean, ultimately, the owner's is really what matters <laughs> that's what you get paid off of and that's <laughs> what all the the you know they park the trucks in the garage and the points and everything is based off owners but i certainly think from the media perspective uh there's initiative for the driver's piece to be the pinnacle so mm -hmm. um there's the divide i feel like you know the industry and racing is is ultimately done off the owners and and you know the financial side of it and then the the uh, public relations side of it, and 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 you know the entertainment side is focused on the drivers for whatever reason. So it does make it confusing, but uh, really ultimately, um, you know the drivers or, or sorry the owners is 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 what for us at least is is what is comparable to our competition. Um, and you know, and you, if you go drivers with Chase, obviously seven races short. So. Um, yeah, when we've been been you know happy with our improvement and certainly trying to get to victory lanes a big deal and making it through these rounds and and uh, I hate to be talking to you guys after a sour note of, of Vegas and and uh, you know <laughs> unfortunately in this business it's you're only as good as your last week and and you know we had a terrible last week so you feel bad about that but I think overall uh, through the chase the the performance has been an uptick. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've been I've been thoroughly impressed. I put the numbers back together as we made the transition into the round of eight, and uh, 
and it was incredible. And people were discounting, but the the you guys are back to what I feel like the nine team was pre uh, pre accident there with a uh, with with the snowboarding piece. Um, talk about the challenges of Chase being out for several races, having a, a having to kind of acclimate to other drivers. I thought the guys that came in, uh, Jordan Taylor and and uh, and Josh, um, you know, did a great job. But talk about the challenges that does, and then the challenges of getting yourself and you and Chase and and that program back to your championship form. It's it's not just insert driver back. You you kind of have to make up for some lost time, don't you? Yeah, I think. Um you know, it's like anything else, like, you know, if you're going to be good at something, it's, it's about consistent repetition and consistent improvement and consistent time. And, um, when, when Chase isn't in the car racing himself and we're not communicating about the car or the state of current events or the team on a regular basis, it's not that we weren't talking, but it's just not as, uh, you know, frequent or is 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 as poignant as you normally would have. Uh, you get behind, uh, and and then you have to kind of make up for that. And it was really interesting to me. You just don't really until you go through it. You can never understand the magnitude. And then ultimately, we go through the circumstances, and then um, you know, getting him back in the car. But what really, was the big tell to me was then get it getting back to races that we are running a second time that he had had raced the first time, right? So like. When you go back to these races the second time, and either if Josh had driven, um, and Vegas was a great example, like we just wouldn't have much to go on, right? You didn't have Chase's feedback, you didn't have Chase's information, and we really were better off, you know, basing our, you know, our improvement and our adjustments on William or Kyle or Alex, um, because at that point in time, Josh had never driven a, a, a you know, next gen car. So when we really started going back to races that Chase had run. The first race and the second race it was really apparent to me how much further we were ahead going back into those races the second time and and you just can't uh um you know we tried our best we, we want you want to account for him being gone and you want to uh you know make sure that you you don't miss a beat and, and it's just it's a difficult thing to do so um it's it's nice now getting back to the point of 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 things flowing and, and feeling like we're back on equal terms to where we should be yeah, the dynamic at Hendrick Motorsports, as we look at it now, uh, from a driver's perspective, you got one in the final four. Uh, we got Rudy and William trying to get in, and you're trying to get into the owner's championship. What's the dynamic like with all of those moving parts and pieces and three of the four teams still really racing for a championship? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I, the, the the teamwork, the cohesiveness, um as an organization, I've been here for a long time. It's, it's never been as good as it is now. There's never been uh, a group of crew chiefs and teams that are, are more cohesive and working together mm. for collective strength than we've had. And I think that shows in the performance. And certainly everybody's ex super excited about getting Kyle in. And, and it's a great thing for all of us. And it gives us an opportunity you know, to to uh, focus on getting, you know, the 24 in and, and getting us in in the owner's points and, and working through it. And so, um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a fun time, you know. When you go through your career, there's times that you're really not racing for anything, you know, you, you know, you, and that's tough. And, and we're super fortunate here that there's really not a week that we're not racing to win or to win a championship or, or, or uh, you know, something of very significant uh, accomplishment some some very significant significant record or whatever so it's yeah. just i feel super fortunate to be a part of that and it's an amazing thing to to work at a place that uh you know mr hendrick sets the tone for and and and, and uh we have a, a great amount of people uh that uh yeah want to work together accomplish great things and and you, you talked about the, you know the the performance or the you know the lack of performance at at vegas it really puts you in a situation where to go for the owner's championship, you need to win one of these next two races. I, and yeah, I mean, sure. I, I feel pretty good about your opportunities, especially the run you've been on. We go to Homestead this weekend and we practice at 9.05 in the morning and, and qualify then. And then we've got a mid-afternoon kind of, yeah. I mean, what are the challenges of that practice session to the race that we're going to have kind of in the heat of the day? Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, Great question, and it's it's a really tough thing because and we really ran into it at Vegas. 
uh, was was just as extreme. And um, you know, you go out there at, at nine thirty in the morning, and it's super cool. There's no rubber on the track. The pace is just through the roof, right? I mean, you're just running really as fast as everybody qualified, right? Our practice lap time, our practice lap time would have put us in a really good qualifying position at Vegas, <laughs> right? So it's, um, I expect the same thing at, at Homestead. So you're not really going to get a great indication on what um, your big struggle is going to be during the race. You're going to have a really ripped up track. It's cool. Uh, you know, probably going to be able to run down off the wall. And you're probably going to be able to make time in lanes that you're not going to be able to make time in when there's a lot of traffic out there and there's rubber on the track and it's warm. So that is certainly an added uh, degree of difficulty. And, and uh, I think that uh, at Vegas, we learned some things on how to handle that a little bit better and, and going to try to apply that at Homestead. So I, th that made me think of something and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to open wounds here, but do you feel like the tire failure you had in practice, is that, is that directly related to the fact that the practice was so early, that the pace was so fast, that the loads are yeah. so big? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, you're a smart guy, Todd. <laughs> Hit the nail on the head, right? I mean, I, I wasn't going to say it, but uh, since you, uh, yeah, picked up on it pretty quickly, I'm going to say it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I've been places like, I remember Michigan, we used to have Michigan, like, I, I don't know. We had a practice early in the morning. The motor guys didn't want us to run it because you'd run so fast yeah. that it would it put the RPM range in a different range. But, but when you're running tires the way that we have to with all the aero performances out of it, you're on that ragged edge. And, and now you go half a second faster at a rough wow. racetrack. There's a lot of load that goes in the tire that you don't really kind of anticipate, right? Yeah. And you ultimately would never see. Yeah. You have that practice at three o'clock in the afternoon. That doesn't happen. Nice. Oh, wow. I, I, I had thought of it, but when he brought it up, I, I picked it up. When you threw it out there, I, I, I you yeah, you picked, yeah, yeah. Like it, I, I kind of started laughing as soon as you started talking. I'm like, yeah, he, he definitely picked up what I was putting down. So. Yeah. There we go. Final question for you. Uh, you mentioned you like going to South Florida. Of course, you're a Florida native. You are a winner at Homestead back in 2012 with some guy named Jeff Gordon, who's still active over there at Henrik Motorsports. What do you remember about that day? And you know, just do you do you, when you, when you pull back into a place like this, even even 11 years later, do you do you, do you kind of remember? that's just a little bit about that day i don't but i do remember that day very vividly because it was the uh the race after the skirmish we had at phoenix <laughs> with, uh, oh that's with right clint boyer yeah and i actually think uh, and i going back in the memory banks here and i could be wrong but i think clint finished second to us that day or third <laughs> very close <Yeah. laughs> i do i do remember winning the race and kind of being like you know, I, I you, yeah, you, you know, I'm not taking sides on that thing. We all know, you know, things happen, but uh, like it's significant at the time, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure we won. We I know we won. Obviously, I'm pretty sure we finished second. So That's awesome. Me. That is awesome. Good stuff, Alan. We're gonna let you get back to it, but we do appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us here on Crew Call, and uh, we'll see you in South Florida. Yeah, thanks, fellas. Always is a pleasure to talk to you and have a, have a great day and see you down there. There you All go. Right. Thanks, Alan, Alan Gustafson from Hendrick Motorsports. Stay with us. More Crew Call in just a moment. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Todd Gordon and Steve Post just wrapped up a fascinating visit with Alan Gustafson. Our stats guru, producer extraordinaire Julian, has whispered in our ear that Yes. As a Jeff man. Gordon won the race. Clint Boyer finished second. So Alan did recall that properly. That's how those things always work. Yes. When there's a skirmish, they end up, it, the, the driver's going to qualify side by side. They're going to have to ride the truck around the racetrack together. Like it's, it's just, the, it's just the racing karma gods, you yeah. know, it's going to put you there, but uh, it, it's funny, you know, it's what, 12, 13 years ago. And he's still like, eh, yeah, I think we ended up, yeah. the memory's there. The memory is there and the memory of the skirmish. I'd forgotten. I, I hadn't put it together. I hadn't forgotten the the Boyer thing in Phoenix, but it's funny that it played out that yes. way the next week where they finished one, two. Um, Alan's on the good side of that with yep. number one. And yep. then he said, I'm not going to take, I'm not taking sides or anything like yeah. at that point, you're, you're you're, sides. at that point, you're on a side. <laughs> yeah, that yep. is fun stuff. Great to catch up with Alan. I, I can't imagine the challenges of this season um for what he has yeah. gone through i mean he is such a yeah you, know, you know looking at his stats and his numbers 36 wins uh chase elliott 16 jeff gordon 11 mark martin 5 kyle bush 4 i mean this guy has done it all mm -hmm. and, and i don't care human nature is he had to be at some point this season saying are you freaking kidding me yeah. was it? you know i mean yeah i've seen it all but i haven't seen this before but but to your point 
they're back in championship form, and they I are. think that speaks volumes for his leadership of that team. And, and you can't just take seven weeks off. No. You just can't, to, to the point, and I think he hit the pieces, that you don't have the notebook. Yeah. This car is new enough that we're still coming back to racetracks for the third and fourth time, or sometimes the second time. Right. Be, be, so, so the notebook, you've, you can't give up notes and, and an experience and then expect to come back and be in cha- championship caliber. Well, well, yeah, let's take Las Vegas. This is, that was the fourth race, okay? Three prior races, they gave up 33% of yes. their notebook, and it was yes. the most recent race. And the current one. And the current one. Because, because the notes from the first race at Vegas... If you took the setup from the first oh, race from at Vegas last year in the spring, yeah, oh, you, yeah. you'd run thirty fifth all day. Right, exactly. The so, winning car. So your your best notes are from a year ago, when everyone else's best notes are from the, yes. all the changes yes. into this year and into this. This, I mean, we had updates on the bodies, on the cars, exactly. It just, so it, it's, it's totally point, really it's good stuff off. there. Man. And I, I, we could have gone on a lot longer, but let's. We're trying to be honest and, and relevant to. Alan's still got a championship go run. Yeah, he does. So and we want to get him back. Appreciate him back the on time the he gave floor. us. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's always a challenge. We'll go a little behind the scenes here. That's a challenge this time of year because we know how busy everyone is. And we kind of put the feelers out for Alan a couple weeks ago. And the next thing you know, it's like, uh, Alan could do it this week. You know, yeah. like, we're going to grab him, but we're going to keep this 10 or so minutes to get him back on the floor yeah. um, because we respect the job that he has to do to go to win that championship. I think they've got a shot. Yeah, I think so, too. I, oh, I, I think, think so. so. I, I, I really love the point. I hadn't put it together. He kind of threw the little tidbit out there. But, you know, you, these morning practices, they're tough on situations. And when you've got tires that are right at that point. Right at the edge. That, that's unfortunate for him uh in one of those situations we've got it coming again this weekend be yeah. interesting how people handle it speaking of right on the edge okay cliff daniels is not on the edge no he's not cliff daniels is, is sleeping well and yes. sim time and Been there done that it's massaging great massaging and spit polishing that race car and everything else everybody else is in a mess yeah. Because the guy that is in the best spot is William Byron, and he has got a whopping nine point cushion. Yeah. Over the car that ran second last week. Over the car that ran second last week. I mean, this is unreal. Nine, two, 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 the next four spots. We've, we've got Reddick, Blaney, and Busher are 16, 17, and 23, respectively. That's that is going to be a major challenge to overcome that in They've the round win. in the round of in the round of sixteen. You're sixteen points out. You're yeah. not worried about it. In the round of eight, you're sixteen points out. You're, you got to win. You got to win. I, I I mean I really feel like there's five cars that don't feel like they have to win, and right. that ends with Christopher Bell, who's two points out. Two points out. They can point their way forward. But and you, we saw it last week. The eight playoff drivers finished in the top eleven. Yeah. Tough to gain points. You, you aren't gaining points on somebody if they're finishing right behind you. Like, yeah, the, the problem is the points, but it's also, the, like, if you, Chris Busher, 23 yeah. points to make up. The problem of it is, is not only the 23 points, but it's the four or five yes. drivers. Yes. That, so, in other words, you've got to have three or four or five drivers have a problem for you to make up those points. And, and these, these guys, are the teams that are not having problems. These are the guys that didn't have problems. That's how they got here. <laughs> exactly. So, I just, I just feel like, you know, you look at it, and I think Tyler Reddick's got a shot this weekend. Yeah. I think Ryan Blaney's got a shot this weekend. I, I don't feel great about Chris. Chris Busher. Yeah. I, I just, they had a great run into the playoffs, but I just don't, and, and I actually, when we, when Sirius mm-hmm. asked us to do this, to kind of yeah. lay out our championship four, and I had Chris Busher in, then I looked at this round and I said, eh. Yeah. And I took Chris Busher out and put Kyle Larson in. I think I did all right. You think you did all right? Absolutely. So it is going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. It really, truly is. And can't wait to get down there. And uh, Todd Gordon, you're going to be part of our broadcast yeah, team down there, at, too. Looking, I know you love going to Homestead. I do. It's my favorite racetrack. Favorite racetrack. I, it's, it's progressively banked. If you look at where we put on great shows. Yes, this is it. Homestead, Kansas, Vegas, mm-hmm. all progressive banking, all similar. I mean, it's just great racing. Yeah. End of the race, we had we had Christopher Bell up there running that top oh, lane up by gosh, the wall, yeah, making just, run, making time on Kyle yeah, Larson. Just I loved Larson's line, man. We were lucky on Saturday with our practice. We were lucky with one caution here, and we were lucky it wasn't the four hundred and one mile race. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, 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 so I, I'm looking forward to it. Love getting down to South Florida. Um, you know, great memories there. For uh, sure, I, I absolutely. Won an Xfinity race down there with Brad. Obviously, won a championship Good with Joey down it. there. Um, I love the racetrack. It's a challenge. It's one where you'll see different strategies play out. 
you know, the, 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 the lap time fall off is a big deal there. So short pitting is a big advantage. You, you get to see the pit crews. You see, get to see the strategies. You get to see the drivers. I think everything, this tests all facets of your race team. It's a, it's a phenomenal place. Can't wait to get down there and talk about it. And you better unload quick as well. Better have a good race car with all of that so that those pit crews and drivers and quick, but not in jeopardy it. with it, what Alan talked about, that That's 905 sad. practice. It's going to be fascinating. It really, truly is. Speaking of that 905 practice, a good radio transition mm -hmm. right there. Motor Racing Network will be live from Homestead Miami Speedway. And on Saturday, we have three broadcasts. All three series will be on the Motor Racing Network, 9 a.m., NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying, 11.30 a.m., NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Baptist Healthcare Cancer or Health Cancer Care 200. This is the final round of eight. We're going to set and lock in our championship field at Homestead. Uh, Ty Majeski, a guy that needs to win the race, is the defending winner of this race. Yeah. So it's going to be fun to see what happens there. That's at 11.30 a.m. And at 2.30 p.m., the NASCAR Xfinity, Xfinity Series, Contender Boats 300. This is, again, like the Cup Series. This mirrors the Cup Series second in the round of eight. And we're going to see what happens. And nobody is locked in there because Riley Herbst picked yeah. up the win. at, And that was a great win by him, by the way. Dominant. Man, he put it. He, he put a. He, he did it in his hometown. I know. That's hometown, really cool. Really cool. First career win. So uh, everyone is alive and well in the point battle in the Xfinity Series. And then Sunday, 1.30 Eastern Time, the NASCAR Cup Series, a uh, tribute title to Kevin Harvick, Forever 400, presented by Mobile One. Second round, a uh, second race in the round of eight again. Kyle Larson locked in. Everyone else not going to sleep well at all down at Homestead. Trying to make their way in. It's going to be a fun weekend, that's for sure. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to get down there. Going to be awesome. He is Todd Gordon. I'm Steve Post. We appreciate Alan Gustafson joining us here on the program. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us this time here on Crew Call.